And this podcast slash YouTube version of the show is brought to you by The Nerd Herd. The Nerd Herd is a online Discord channel where similar interests in virtual reality gaming, movies, all things nerd are heard together in The Nerd Herd. Uh, a link to their Discord channel is uh, in the description below on wherever you're listening to this, so check them out. Tell them that Colt Sebastian Taylor sent you, and if you would like to become a sponsor of the podcast or YouTube version of the show, just, just go to anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor, click that support button, uh, kick me a few bucks, and we will figure out what you want me to read for you. All right, my friends, let's now finally get started with this week's show. Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar. It is the Saturday Report with Colt Sebastian Taylor. Thank you and welcome once again, my friends, to the Saturday Report with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur moderator of Twitter. And welcome to AWSM Radio, an independent digital-only radio station that plays today's best music, old-school classics, along with a rotating cast of all-star DJs. AWSM Radio focuses on mainstream artists, independent artists, along with a variety of interesting talk and music shows throughout the day. All we do is entertain, inspire, and inform. And my friends, I want you to be part of the conversation. I want to engage with you so you can find me uh, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Facebook, and now even, even on the counter social if you're trying to get off of Twitter. And uh, as well, as well, as well as Anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor, all those places. Uh, the Anchor.fm is where you can listen to the podcast version of this show that uh, gets posted by Sunday-ish, by Sunday-ish. And Cameo, where you can hire me out to have a special birthday greeting or retirement greeting for a special someone or maybe something you don't like. I just did one. Happy birthday, Barry. A little bonus there for you. Um, and, uh, of course, ColtSebastianTaylor.com for all things Colt Sebastian Taylor. All right, my friends. Let's get started with this week's Saturday Report. First up this week, some music news. Only appropriate because this is a, you know, radio station that plays music. Uh, Taylor Swift made history as the first artist with the entire top ten on the Billboard Hot 100. Yes, that's right. This week on the top 10 Billboard Hot 100, every single song was led by, sung by Taylor Swift. First time in history. Uh, Drake claimed nine out of the top 10 spots back in September 2021, but uh, Ms. 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 Swift, Ms. Swift managed to pull it off first time in in uh, the 64-year history of the Billboard Hot 100 song charts. Pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, so the, no the top 10 songs, top 10 songs are number one, Antihero. Number two, Lavender Haze. Number three, Maroon. Uh, number four, Snow on the Beach. Number five, Midnight Rain. Number six, Bejeweled. Number seven, Question. Number eight, you're on your own, kid. Number nine, Karma. And finally, number ten, Vigilante Shift. That's right. All, 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 top ten, all top ten, Billboard 100, which combines streams, airplay, audiences, and sales. Sales combines them. Um, I think, yeah, I think, I don't know how it works, but she claimed the top ten. Pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, number four, just as a note, uh, number four being Snow on the Beach. That does also feature Lana Del Rey, so a little assist from Lana there. But uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Very, very, very impressive. Uh, just to recap the history of Taylor Swift's number hot 100 number ones over the last 10 years, uh, starting from the earliest to the most recent, uh, in 2012, it was we're never we're, we are never ever getting back together again. 2014 had two uh, shake it off in blank space. 2015 had bad blood. 2017 there was look what you made me do. 2020 had two more uh, cardigan and willow. 2021 all too well Taylor's version, and then finally antihero 
in the in this week. Pretty pretty impressive. Uh, she also becomes one of sixteen acts with nine or more hot one hundreds and one of seven solo women, including Mariah Carey, uh, which has nineteen. Rihanna, which has fourteen. Madonna that has twelve. Whitney Houston has eleven. Jan Jackson has ten, and Katy Perry has nine. Um, the Beatles, the Beatles lead all acts with uh, twenty hot, hot one hundred number ones, hot one hundred number ones. So congratulations to Taylor Swift, an amazingly talented artist. Uh, pretty funny too. Pretty funny too when she ever pops up in random, random things and whatnot. So um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, congratulations, congratulations, Taylor Swift. First time in 64 years, all top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100. All all those songs are now claimed by Taylor Swift. Uh, probably won't last until next week, but hey, she only needs one week to claim all 10. So, congratulations. In other music news of lesser um, importance, I suppose. Uh, Lindsay Lohan is releasing uh, her a cover of Jingle Bell Rock ahead of her next Netflix film. Yes, that's right. Lindsay Lohan uh, film coming up on Netflix uh, debut. Debuted. Uh, this song's going to debut on her Netflix movie, I guess she's doing, called Falling for Christmas. Uh, in this film, Lindsay Lohan plays an unlucky hotel heiress with amnesia who falls for the charming lodge owner. Break out your camcorder emoji, because yes, that's Lindsay Lohan singing Jingle Bell Rock in the Falling for Christmas trailer Netflix posted on Twitter this week. Um, so for those uh, playing at home, uh, the, this cl Christmas classic was first released in, 2000, in 1957 by Bobby Holmes. I'm sure my grandmother... Uh, knows uh, knows who exactly who that is. Uh, made a memorable appearance in the 2004 comedy um, uh, Mean Girls, which was also also had Lindsay Lohan, uh, directed by Mark Waters and written by Tina Fey. Uh, in that movie, Lohan, who uh, played uh, Katie Heron, was joined by fellow classmates Rachel McAdams, Lacey Childbert, and a very young Amanda Seyfried. Field, Fried, Seyfried, uh, in a Jingle Bell Rock scene, which uh, they were doing a talent show. Talent show, I believe. Uh, very good movie, very good movie. Kind of before Lindsay Lohan. Uh, got some substance abuse issues and kind of fell off the wagon there. But looks like she's got herself put back together again, so that's always good. But uh, anyways, yes, you can hear the musical talents. The musical talents of Lindsay Lohan in Falling for Christmas, available on Netflix November 10th. By this time next week, you can listen to it. Will I have a full review of this movie? No. No, I will not, because Netflix is not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Next up, my friends, we now go to India. India's capital of New Delhi, uh, where all primary, school primary schools have closed this week due to toxic smog choking the city of 20 million people. And uh, the particles, uh, the level of these, of these particles, uh, the PM25 particles, that they're so tiny, these this small particles, that they can enter the bloodstream, were 25 times the daily maximum recommended by the World Health Organization, according to the air monitoring firm IQ Air. So 25 times than what is recommended and uh, uh, New Delhi apparently has uh, lots of smog issues. Smoke from farmers built, uh, burning crop stubble outside of the city to prepare for the new season of growing. Vehicle exhaust, factory emissions. Uh, every winter, this pierced uh, to the, the smog appears uh, and is blanketed in deadly gray haze. Deadly gray haze. Um, Delhi is frequently ranked as one of the world's most polluted cities. On Friday, it again topped, uh, this past week, this past Friday, it topped IQ Air's list of major cities with the worst air quality. And if you take a look at it, it's just, just a smoggy, <sighs> smoggy haze around the entire city. And uh, unfortunately, there's not much, 
not much you can do about it. There's so many things that contribute to the smog that uh, even by halting construction for a few weeks on projects and trying to reduce emissions does not make that much of a difference. A 2020 study by Lancet attributed 1.67 million, with an M, million deaths to air pollution in India uh, during the past in the past 12 months or when they did the study, including over 17,000 people in the capital. Okay, now there's over a billion people in India for those playing guess how big countries are and whatnot. Uh, it's one of the largest countries in terms of population in the world. I'm not quite sure which one's bigger, China or India, but they're, they're, both of them are over a billion, over a billion. But, uh, so, you know, it's a lot of people, a lot of emissions, and uh, the air and smog there kill over one and a half million people a year there because the air is so bad, apparently. Um, however, however, it's not only a uh, environmental and health problem, but it's also a political flashpoint. Um, Delhi is in the northern state of Punjab, governed by the AAP party, and a rival to Prime Minister Modi's BJP party. So, uh, this is also a, also a political butting of heads between the parties as well, blaming each other, uh, about what's going on. Although many people are saying that finger pointing and blame games need to stop. According to um, one spokesman, uh, it won't help in finding solutions. We can blame them, and they can blame us, but that would lead to nothing. Farmers need solutions, he added. The day they get a solution, they will stop burning the stubble. So basically, like, what's left over, you know, you, you, you harvest wheat, there's still stuff at the bottom. They burn that so they can get ready for the next year's, uh, next year's uh, growing season, so... Hopefully that clears up so kids can go back to school. But until the smog situation improves, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, schools remain closed for quite a while. Quite a while. Next up, my friends, we go to Peru, where 70 tourists are currently being held hostage in Peru by an Amazonian uh, tribe uh, to bring attention to the pollution going on in the Amazonian air, uh, rainforest. The indigenous people from the Cunico, uh, from the northernmost Loreto, Loreto province in Peru, have detained a group of uh, tourists to protest the lack of government aid following an oil spill. According to Watson Chirillo, the leader of the community, told radio programs de Peru, uh, we want to call the government's attention with this action. There are foreigners and Peruvians there are about 70 people. Uh, the tourists include citizens from Spain, France, Switzerland, and the United States. Uh, they uh, spent a night inside the boat while the Trilogio waits to hear from the government with photos showing the boat moored to the side of the Maharon River. Um, the tourists may be held for about six to eight days until a deal, until a deal has been reached. Uh, the Trujillo said the group took a radical me measure in efforts to pressure the government to assess the environmental damage from over 2,000 tons of crude oil leaking into the river. Uh, the tourists include a one-month-year-old child, someone with disabilities, a pregnant woman, and elderly people as well. Uh, according to uh, Angela Ramirez, one of the detainees posted on Facebook, they told us that it was because they are seeking the attention of the state to resolve the oil spill, and as a result, two children and a woman have died from the oil spill. They are kind and respectful to us, but it is the only way they have found to look only way they have found to look for solutions for the community uh, in the in the post. Uh, the quicker they are heard, the quicker they will let us go. We've been here since 10 a.m. They took the boat and took the battery, so you know the boat can't go anywhere. Uh, help me share. We are physically fine. Uh, help me, help me, help them be heard. According to the British Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, uh, they're also uh, confirmed that there are a very small number of British nationals caught up in the protest as well. Uh, and uh, so basically, basically, there is a the North Peruvian pipeline, which is an oil pipeline going through Peru. 
uh, burst uh, on September 16th, uh, calling, causing a 90-day state of emergency to be uh, declared in the region to help with the cleanup. Uh, according to the oil company Petro Peru, the spill was caused uh, because of an potential 21-centimeter cut in the pipeline. Uh, the river in the area has long been the lifeline to the native people living there, a source of drinking water, fish, recreation for children uh, who splash in it in the hot summer day. However, oil spills have caused major pollution in here. Uh, in 2014, another 2,000 gallons of oil spilled into the river, dyeing it a deep black and contaminated with toxic metals. Two more major spills, as well as 20 other smaller ones, uh, have taken place over the, the next uh, five years since then. Um, the pipeline is a 40-year-old, 800-kilometer pipeline that carries crude oil from the Amazon across the Andes Mountains and to the Pacific Coast. Uh, according to uh, Peruvian Amazon, which is a uh, organization that uh, monitors the Amazon rainforest in Peru, between 2000 and 2019, there have been over 470 oil spills in there. So, these folks, eh, they kind of had enough and they took some hostages. Now, I'll tell you what, this is the first time I've heard about it, so they got the attention. Uh, but hopefully, next six to eight days, they will get the resources they need from the Peruvian government, who seem to be dragging their feet cleaning up the area. So uh, those folks will be let go, and uh, the cleanup of the spill can begin. Moving along into some sadder news, uh, food writer Julia Powell passed away this week at the age of 49 from a cardiac arrest. She was the author uh, behind the book... Um, that inspired the movie Julie and Julia, where if you watch the movie, which watch the movie, which I did, uh, it followed uh, this writer who uh, was going through the joy of cooking a uh, book, one meal every day. Uh, and then we also went back and checked out the life of Julia Roberts as well. But uh, yeah, she passed away recently due to a cardiac arrest at the age of 49. Very, very young. And uh, you know, Cardiac arrest in women is unfortunately uh, not an uncommon thing. Um, it's 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 kind of a kind of a well, it's kind of a not does not get enough attention as it should. Does not get enough attention as it should. Uh, she had COVID earlier this year, although there is no evidence right now that suggests that COVID has caused anything with uh, this uh, heart attack or not. Uh, or cardiac arrest. We don't really know whether it was a heart attack or something else, but uh, that's the only information that was released. But, uh, yeah, very, very sad. Cardiac arrest causes, according to the National Institute of Health, uh, almost a half a million deaths in the United States every year. And uh, heart disease is the number one cause of death for women in the United States, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, better known as the CDC. Um, the American Heart Association uh, highly recommends that people uh, learn some basic CPR. It could save someone's life. Um, the, there's plenty of free classes out there that, where you can learn uh, all the critical points of CPR. And like I said, that, that may seem silly, but that CPR could help save someone's life. Uh, if someone does lose consciousness or has a cardiac arrest, the American Heart Association recommends you start immediately with CPR and calling 911. So, unfortunately, once again, the food writer behind the movie, Julie, Julie and Julia, Julie and Julia, uh, Ms. Uh, Julie Powell, passed away this week at the age of 49 uh, due to a cardiac arrest. And uh, so, if you have a chance, check out the movie, check out her book. Very talented food writer. And, uh, yeah, just, just a sad story to pass along. Moving along to some good news, as far as I'm concerned, the, the European Union has banned <laughs> conspiracy theorist David Icke for two years. Yes, that's right. David Icke, known uh, conspiracy theorist from everything from reptilians and just almost anything under the sun, uh, has a almost cult-like following. Like the folks that I have never met anyone who had positive things to say about him to be a normal person. They're usually a wee bit off, and I immediately changed the conversation. 
Well, anyways, the Dutch government has banned him from the Netherlands and the entire Schengen area, which is the entire European Union, uh, for two years, fearing his presence could cause uh, disturb public, public, disturb public order. <laughs> uh, Ike claimed that he'd been banned by the quote fascist Dutch regime. Ah, uh, those Dutch. Uh, and published on his website a letter sent to him by Dutch immigration officials on behalf of State Secretary uh, for Justice and Security, Eric Vanderberg. Uh, Ike is a former professional footballer, which is soccer for those folks here in the United States, uh, and television present presenter who has argued that the world is ruled by reptiles and recently... Uh, advocated and was a theory recently advocated by Dutch populist parliamentarian Theory Baudet. <laughs> uh, he was uh, he was uh, uh, scheduled to speak at a demonstration in Amsterdam um, on Sunday uh, against the Ukrainian war, the Dutch government, and high energy prices. Uh, Amsterdam officials feared that there would be clashes, even if. He only appeared via video link. Um, according to the letter sent to him, quote, <laughs> with this letter, I inform... Uh, should I do this in a Dutch accent? I'll do that. With this, this, this letter, I inform you that you have been flagged immediately in the Schlingen information system for two years, and you are not allowed to enter the Schlingen area. You have been, you have been in internationally known for years as a propagator of conspiracy theories. <laughs> I, was, I, I don't know if that's what the Dutch sounds like. Um, so, um, the presence of Ick, who's in the past made offensive statements and anti-Semitic statements, could lead to unrest in the Netherlands, uh, and uh, that's why he has been banned. Uh, the Dutch authorities say this is the second time they've taken such actions. Uh, they've banned, in 2019, they banned Stephen Anderson a American preacher who believes that gay people should be executed. So, gosh, you know, he's in good company of crazies. So, I guess he has to stay in the United Kingdom. David Icke, not allowed to go to Europe. Boy, boy, howdy. <laughs> that guy, that guy is a lunatic. The man is a lunatic. And, uh, whew, whew. Boy, you know what? If you listen to any of his word salad, you feel you feel your sanity slowly leaving you. He probably is a reptilian. I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna start my own conspiracy theory. David Icke is a reptilian, and he is pointing out other reptilians as a way to hide his own reptilian tilliness. Ha ha ha! Ah, uh, you know what? The difference between that theory and uh, David Icke's theory. Um, I can go to the Netherlands anytime I want. <laughs> and you know who else can go to the Netherlands anytime he wants to? My friend DC, but not on the weekend because he is here on AWSM Radio with some great music. That's right, my friends. It's a DC live in effect Fridays at 9 p.m. You do not want to miss out while he smashes it on the ones and twos with his totally human hands not reptilian hands, uh, kicking the beach from South Florida every week. And then on Saturdays, Saturdays, my friends, it's DC House Party Saturdays, where DC brings his free styling DJ to the max. You can check out all the perfectly human, non-reptilian Miami vibe without actually having to go down there. From the top clubs to the bars, DC will bring the party to you Saturdays at 10 p.m. And then Sundays at 10 p.m. Once again, 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 it is DC Live in Effect. So, just to review, Fridays at 9, DC Live in Effect. Saturdays at 10, DC House Party Saturdays. And then Sundays at 10 p.m., DC Live in Effect, yet again. Only here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. Next up, folks, it's time for an Elon Musk Twitter update. That's right, my friends. Um, I usually cover, I mean, like, I don't cover national news too often. I like to give you stories that you might have missed, but gosh, it's like watching a train wreck. I really just can't get enough of it. So, as you may have picked up, and I've reported on this since the f it first popped up in April, Elon Musk now officially owns Twitter. The deal is done. His, 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 he's the, now the chief twit according to his own 
Twitter profile. And, um, you know, things are not going too well at the moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he uh, owes it. Over the weekend, he has laid off a bunch of people. Uh, reports say about 50. 50% 50 of the workforce has been laid off. Uh, how did he do this? A big company meeting? Nope. They uh, closed the offices over the weekend turned off everyone's uh, swipe cards, so they emptied out the office and said, you will know if you have a job Monday morning. Uh, if you do, you'll get an email in your corporate email account, <clears throat> or you won't be able to access that, and you'll get an email in your personal email account. Yes, that's right. Firing by email. Wow, what a guy. Uh, also, also, um, he is going to be charging for the blue check mark. Yes, so on Twitter, so that you no know, every Tom Dick and Joe don't claim to be Burt Reynolds or something, uh, they Twitter will verify people. Am I verified? No, I should be because I'm a award-winning journalist, or at least I will be, maybe one of these days. I mean, I mean, I could say that. Um, who knows? Things cr crazier things have happened. Uh, but I'm not verified. But for a low, low price of eight dollars, I could be. Yes, that's right. I could be verified on Twitter. For eight dollars a month, it was going to be twenty dollars a month, but uh, sort of in a real time, real time testing of fees, that's now down to eight dollars. And many celebrities, uh, or any celebrity that wants to keep their blue check mark, will have to pay eight dollars uh, a month to keep it. That's that's right, eight dollars a month to keep it. To keep it, uh, many celebrities, uh, a lot of news folks are uh, are. Just sort of <laughs> really are uh, uh, gruffing against this. Uh, those on Fox News said they would never pay for it, although let's be honest, the company will probably pay for it. But yeah, anyone can uh, apparently just get in there and uh, get get verified in a few weeks for a low, low price of $8. So I would say that Elon Musk is not so much a proponent of free speech, but he's a proponent of Fee speech. <laughs> uh, yeah, so with that $8, your replies will get priority, apparently. So at the top of the list, I guess some other features as well. Um, yeah. So uh, also, also uh, Elon Musk has also fired a bunch of people in terms of content moderation. So all of the crazies in the woodworks are coming out and all the terrible things that would get you banned usually um, that's just free-flowing right now, apparently. Although, funny thing did happen to me this week. Um, I got suspended for 12 hours on Twitter. Never before, despite all the crazy things that I say, have I ever been suspended on Twitter. But some right-wing chode, uh, spreading conspiracy theories about the Paul Pelosi attack, uh, I called him a, well, I called him a series of different names. He got a little, little hurt about that, and then reported me, and then apparently I got suspended for 12 hours. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? But him spreading homophobic, transphobic uh, conspiracy theories about political figures to endanger them and others, perfectly okay. So, yeah, things are going great at Twitter. Uh, also on Twitter, also on Twitter, uh, Elon Musk was complaining, uh, was planning that uh, advertisers were leaving in droves, uh, according to, quote, activist groups pressuring advertisers, even though nothing has changed with content moderation, and we did everything we could to appease activists. Extremely messed up. They're trying to destroy free speech in America. Well, you know, um, nothing changed except you fired all the people who had the guardrails up there, and you know what? People spreading conspiracy theories about reptilians and how they, how people should be killed and whatnot, eh, eh, may not be the best place to put your marketing money. May not be the best place to put your marketing money. You know, just saying, just saying, just saying. Also upset, also upset is uh, many people on the right who want their accounts back for being, you know, kicked off for doing terrible things in the past, uh, according to uh, various statements released by Twitter, uh, no one's getting their account back for at least 
weeks and weeks from now, they're still working through the moderating system and whatnot. So lots of folks feel like they've been bamboozled by Elon Musk, making no one happy. And again, he paid $44 billion for Twitter, a company that has not made any profit in the last two years. Made $5 billion, spent $5.5 billion. The, the company does not make money. It does not make, has not made money. So he's figuring if he cuts the workforce in half and has told all departments to figure out how to save a billion dollars, he can start making some money off of Twitter, which he has to because the interest payments for the loans he took to buy Twitter, he's only going to come up with a billion dollars, a billion dollars. So um, is it going to work? Will he succeed? Ooh, doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. Not least, least not too much. Least not not working out so far. But uh, yeah, lots of people are getting fired. Uh, people are happy they're getting fired because they uh, think they're they're somehow some somehow this is going to open up Twitter to all of the quote unquote free speech. Uh, just just as a reminder to people, the First Amendment gives you free speech. Okay, that doesn't mean there's not consequences for their speech. Like, if for example, I if I came in here on the radio and called for the invasion of Delaware by Pennsylvania to revoke their independence from the colony of 1701, look it up, Delaware. Um, you know, I can. Will AWSM Radio then kick me off the air if I spend all my time talking about invading Delaware? Probably. Are they? Are they? Are they inhibiting my free speech? No, it's a consequence of my actions. I was free to say it. I'm not free to stay here, though. You know, you know, you no. Know, the the, the AWSN radio is not the government. The government can't stop you from saying something. If Joe Biden said, "Hey there, partner, uh, Colts, I'm from Delaware. You can't invade Delaware from Pennsylvania," and as president, I'm going to say no. The, the United States government says, no, Colt, you can't get on the radio. You see, that would be a First Amendment thing. That's the government doing something. Not, not a private business, okay? Not a business. This is a biz Twitter's a business, okay? Now, listen, friends, listen. If you're calling for the nationalization of Twitter to make it a public utility so that everyone can speak on Twitter, I will give you that. Listen, listen. I will give you the nationalization of Twitter for the nationalization of healthcare. So there you go. I will I will gladly trade you Twitter for healthcare. So if we can make that deal, <clears throat> let's make that deal. No? Okay, well then it is what it is. It is what it is. <sighs> and also, just as a note, folks, uh the people who are just saying that they also Elon Musk also fired the entire board of directors and whatnot. And people are very happy that the CEO of Twitter got fired. That he'll never have a job again in the tech world. Uh, I think not. He convinced a crazy, uh, a crazy Bond villain to pay forty-four billion dollars for a company that doesn't make money and got their shareholders a ton of money. So yeah, he, and he's only been he was he worked there for a year. He did a fine job. A fine job, my friends. A fine job. Oh, wow. I did not expect to spend that much time talking about Twitter, but I just cannot pull myself away from this train wreck. I just can't. I just, just, just can't. My friends, one person that the government can never silence, no matter how hard they try, is my friend Rox. Why? Because she's on so often. That's right. The Rock Sessions is our drive time show here on AWSM Radio. Making sure that your evening commute home is fun. Featuring the hottest music on the charts and some other surprises in between. She will make it rock. Rock style. Monday through Friday. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Only here on AWSM Radio. Next up, folks. Gardening. Yes, gardening. The age-old hobby of relaxation. Watching a plant grow and bloom, sometimes planting vegetables. My goodness, who doesn't like gardening? Um, I know my mother enjoys gardening. Mama Taylor likes to grow her own vegetables along with my grandmother. Oh boy, gardening. Well, golly, you know, 
ever get bored sometimes while you're gardening and decide to plant the world's most dangerous plant and weed in there? Well, well, Daniel Elwin Jones did. Yes, that's right. Uh, he uh, uh, planted the um, the the gimpy gimpy, the gimpy gimpy, uh, native to Australia. Uh, it has a sting that is so painful, it can lead to suicidal thoughts. <laughs> uh, but he's not in Australia. He's from Oxford. And he uh, well, decided to uh, wanted to add a bit of drama to his gardening. So uh, instead of planting a fig leaf tree or an orchard, uh, dubbed some of the hardest to nurture in the plants, uh, he decided to uh, opt for a member of the nettle family. Uh, according to a quote, he said, I just thought that I would add a bit of drama to my gardening. You can get seeds on the internet. You have to be careful. It doesn't spread out of a contained area, though. So I keep it potted in my front room. I got the seeds from a company in Australia. It cost me something like 60 Australian dollars. So it wasn't cheap. I've always liked the plants, though. I just have got a bit bored with geraniums. Yeah, so he's bored, so he got the world's most dangerous plants. Uh, according to the internet, he continued, Aborigines supposedly used it to help treat arthritis. I'm not sure how, that, how true that is or how it would work. So the plant is very uh, dangerous. Uh, notorious for an extremely painful sting that leave its victims suffering for weeks or even months. Uh, those who have been stung by the shrub describe it the pain, the worst kind you can imagine. Um, uh, he uh, now this uh, gentleman here, he's been growing bananas in his front garden and thought the gimpy gimpy plant would keep things interesting. Uh, he put the plant in a cage with a sign that says danger. Uh, he asked if he'd been stung yet, and Daniel said he had had a few brushes with danger. He said, if you grasp it, grasp it, uh, it's probably not a good idea. But I've been slightly stung by it through the fabric bit on the back of my heavy-duty elbow, uh, length gloves, and it wasn't awful. I've got 3% hydrochloric acid which you can soak the area for 15 minutes to lessen the sting. Uh, it was very light. It didn't really bother me much, to be honest. I do keep it in a cage, though, and I keep the leaves away from the bars, as if someone came too close and brushed against it, it could be quite risky. So, my friends, if you get bored with gardening, get a fig tree. They're hard to grow, and they probably won't kill you. This plant might. It might. It might. You know, when I get bored, I just, like, go for a drive. Or I, you know, find something on Netflix. But uh, this guy, oh boy. Uh, whew. I hate to, I Maybe people should check his basement for a skin suit. See how bored he actually gets. Speaking of Netflix, Netflix uh, now has ads. Yes, that's right, my friends. Netflix, well known for not having ads uh, in its programming, is now adding ads... <clears throat> with its uh, six ninety nine per month um, cheaper subscription, Netflix Basic with ads uh, will have ads playing throughout uh, shows. Now, for TV shows, there are sort of natural breaks for ads and whatnot. You know, there's them. You know, it's what TV shows do. They kind of break for ads. Uh, but apparently, according to one person who watched Netflix Basic over uh, the weekend, there's no really rhyme or reason of when ads decide to appear. According to Netflix, uh, people can expect to see four to five minutes of ads per hour, which, you know, it's kind of a lot. Um, kind of, kind of a lot. So, uh, this person did some experimentation, some experimentation, went through some Netflix shows and some movies and see uh, what would happen. Uh, according to uh, their experience, and this is... Uh, who did this? Uh, Jay Peters from The Verge checked it out. Uh, he said that uh, every Netflix branded show or movie he tried had an ad at the front, but had different number of mid-ad roles. The mid-ad roles are ads that, that play in the middle of a show. Community, Seinfeld, and Grey as Anatomy had no ads. Uh, three Netflix, Netflix movies he tried had ads at the beginning, but nothing in the middle. 
uh, Love Crazy, L Crazy Stupid Love, the movie, had ad had front ads and one spot for mid-roll ads. The Italian Job had front ads and three spots for mid-roll ads. These are ads that appear in the middle of the movie. Uh, and Spider-Man had no ads. So, right now, it's kind of, um, kind of... Kind of, kind of bounces around a lot. So probably, probably you will, um, you'll start seeing them on Netflix. Ads are between uh, fifteen to thirty seconds long. Uh, you can pause them, but you can't skip them. Uh, and the Netflix also has a countdown little clock at the top to let you know how many ads are coming along and how many ads you have to sit through before it starts again. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Netflix has ads now. Uh, most streaming, uh, this is the way most streaming places are going now. Most, I mean, Hulu's had ads, unless you paid for, like, premium Hulu. But many of these, uh, many of these things are now, um, now going to be ads. Now, one major drawback in the ads tier is that some things are not available to watch, like, uh, Arrested Development you cannot watch. Um, they uh, they charge higher prices, higher prices for some of these things. So some of the newer, more popular shows you gotta pay more for. So will this work? Uh, you know, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> or maybe I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they have four tiers. Uh, Six ninety nine is basic with ads. Uh, basic is $9.99, so I guess there's no ads. Uh, they have a standard for higher quality video, uh, 1080pi, PI, um, and then premium or high quality 4K video is $20 a month. So, so let me know what, uh, what you're, what, let me, let, if you got Netflix, let me know what you're doing. I'd be really curious. I'd be really curious. Really, really, really curious. My friends, listen, you are probably a big sports fan like I am. I know that this week for me, I've been watching the World Series with the Philadelphia Phillies and Houston Astros. Hopefully the Phillies will win. Oof, doesn't look too good right right now, but hopefully they'll they'll sweep the rest of the games in, in Houston. I watched the Eagles on Thursday remain undefeated. But for basketball, my friends, where do you go for basketball stuff? It's to the rack with Mac. It's for all things basketball. Join NBA expert Mac Daddy as he brings you a full hour of high-flying hoops expertise for all things NBA. Tune in Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. And then at 10 p.m., it's What's Going On, our Fox Sports affiliate show, providing listeners with over 150 combined years of sports knowledge, hosted by Nate Brown and his crew. They have been a staple of Western New York sports for the past two decades, and now they're moving national. Wednesdays at 10 p.m., uh, it's What's Going On, 9 p.m., It's To The Rack With Mac, then 10 p.m., What's Going On, only here on AWSM Radio. Well, my friends, that just about wraps up this week's Saturday Part With Me, Colt Sebastian Taylor. Remember, you can find me on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on the Instagram, on Counter Social at Colt S. Taylor, as well as Cameo at Colt S. Taylor, the podcast version of this show, which may include an extra bit or two, who knows, uh, can be listened to every weekend, usually on Sunday, at anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. And my friends, if you want to hear my velvety voice reading a sponsored ad from you, just contact the fine folks at AWSM Radio and tell them that I want Colt to read my ad, and I will, and it'll be immortalized via podcast as well, if that's what you want. If not, I can, I can always take it out. But uh, if you want to be heard on this show, those are the folks to talk to. Uh, well, my friends... Uh, this week is also election week. Tuesday is elections. Go out and vote. Have your voices be heard. I highly encourage it. And, uh, so vote, and then I will join you next week on another episode of the Saturday Report. Until then, my friends, I am, of course, your friend, Colt Sebastian Taylor, and I'll see you later.